Ready-Made Maths YouTube training videos. Teacher and Teaching Assistant Training. This week, we are moving into Readiness for Mastery in EYFS. Part 1, Arrangements and Images. The themes of this week's training are basically to look at all the key elements of EYFS manipulation of number. We're going to focus very specifically on mastering numbers to 10. We will briefly look beyond that, but the main focus will be on looking at numbers within 10 and how to look at them in many, many different ways. In order to do that, we'll be looking at models, images and resources, looking at a wide range of images that can be used to display and show numbers so that children in early years have a real sense of what small numbers are all about. A big part of that will be arrangements. We'll be looking at the most efficient and most useful ways to arrange numbers so that children aren't just counting numbers in a straight line, but are seeing them in other ways that helps them give a real sense of what those numbers look like. The arrangement I'll be focusing on the most will be tens frames or egg boxes. We'll be looking at mastery from the Far East and how the tens frame image really builds up mathematical understanding. We'll be using egg boxes and similar resources to show how tens frames can actually be used as a kind of container uh, as well. The theme of the whole week will be making numbers in different ways, using all of the above things that we previously mentioned, showing different ways uh, that a number can be arranged uh, and visualised. As with all the training, we'll also be looking at some songs and some games as well uh, to keep it entertaining along the way. So I hope you enjoy the week's work uh, and that you get a lot out of this. Uh, again, it's aimed at foundation stage, but teachers in key stage one may well get a lot of ideas uh, that they can use uh, with some of their pupils. Hello and welcome to week three of the Ready Made Maths YouTube videos. Uh, as you'll see today, I've come a little bit prepared in my mathematics t-shirt, which is my uh, pie t-shirt with a little sloth uh, that my daughter got me for Christmas, uh, quite a, a little bit of a mathematics uh, leaning on it. Um, what we're going to be doing today uh, is something very different to the previous two weeks. Uh, we spent weeks one and two uh, looking at mental mathematics, looking at mental arithmetic, looking at different strategies, but at all times backing that up uh, with visual apparatus. Well, today is all about visuals. It's all about looking at real life things. It's look at, looking at things you can play with. Because today and for the next few days, we are going to be looking at developing mathematics in the early years. As you can see uh, on the table, and actually from looking behind me, my shelves are a little bit more depleted today uh, than previously because I've transferred a lot of the um, apparatus or the, uh, the toys and got them onto the desk. Now, obviously, in early years, it is really good to have natural resources uh, as much as possible. Uh, to use real things that you can get from outside and so on. But obviously for the basis of putting together uh, a training session, I've used a lots of uh, the resources that I use that I take around with me uh, to different places uh, into schools. So we've got the teddies, we've got the dice, we've got the jewels, the gems. Uh, we've got lots of different tens frames, which are quite nice. That I'm going to be referring to later on. Uh, we've also got quite a lot of sweet counter resources over here that I've referred to uh, in the previous weeks. So hopefully, what you're going to get from this session is not cubes or counters or abacuses or numicon or any of the math resources base 10 and so on you know the resources that we used last week were very very specifically mathematics resources that you'll find in many classrooms up and down the country what i want this week to be about is to be about early years about giving them something that means something to them that they can relate to so obviously the activities that we, that we do now can be replicated at home with absolutely anything um, Hope you enjoy the session. It will probably take us two or three days to get through uh, all of the materials uh, this week. We're going to have focuses on various different things. So if I just take you over to the whiteboard, I'll just quickly run you through uh, what we're going to be looking at uh, this week. Um, we're going to be looking at mathematical arrangements, and that's what today is all about. We're going to look at how we can arrange resources in different ways and build up children's sense of early number. There are the images and the resources that we're going to be using and again we can use anything else that you've got available at home or in school or in your early years setting as well mastery of numbers to 10 is the kind of the big thing over the whole week uh, the new foundation stage curriculum uh, is definitely about real mastery of getting us to 10 not really about taking us to 20 or 30 or 50 but to, to help children who are like three and four years old to have a really good understanding, a really good visual, a really good mathematical sense of number for small numbers, rather than really worry about the numbers that get bigger. They can be developed as they move through school. Uh, we are going to do lots of tongues and games. 
Um, so you're going to see uh, a few little activities today and you're going to see some of the songs that I often use uh, in early years uh, as well. Last but not least, we're going to look at tens frames. Tens frames have been around in the UK for a long, long time, but they were originally a bit like this. They were just dots uh, on a piece of paper. I'll just drop one there. Uh, and, you know, many maths consultants over the past 20 or 30 years have used tens frames as a starting point. We will be looking at these briefly uh, later in the week, but what we are going to look at are tens, real life tens frames. What could they look like if we were to create our own? What we're going to do to start this session is actually going to have a little song. Uh, if I'm doing EYFS training uh, normally, then I'd probably kick off any of the sessions with a song. Just something uh, to get the body moving, uh, to get the brains ticking over, and just to practice uh, a simple little skill. As you've seen from any of the videos that I've done over the past two weeks, the resource I tend to use for singing is Number Fun. On the Number Fun portal, there's something like 250 songs, probably even more, that explore all different aspects of mathematics, uh, right from the early years all the way to year six uh, and beyond. The Number Fun portal has been written by a friend of mine called Dave Godfrey. Uh, and what I'm going to show you now is a very, very simple counting song called Wobbling Soldiers. Wobbling Soldiers starts by just giving the children the opportunity to count really simply. They do four pats on the head four touches on the nose, four claps, nice and slow, and then four steps. That builds up to eight, 12, 16, and finally 20. It's a really good fun song, and at the end of each verse, they wobble, and the children love the wobbling a little bit uh, as well. Rather than uh, show you myself, I'm going to go to the number fun portal and show you Dave in action, dressed up uh, as a soldier, doing this actual song. Here goes. Turn shut, wobbling soldiers, count to four. Four pats on the head, one, one two, two, three, four. Four touches on the nose, one, one two, two, three, four. Four claps, nice and slow, one, one two, two, three, four. Four steps, off we go, one, one two, two, three, four, one. As you can see, really, really good song to start off uh, any lesson. I do use Wobbling Soldiers a lot in both nursery and reception. It's just a good, fun way to start the lesson and practice counting uh, in different ways. As you can see, as the verses progress, I'll just very quickly move well into the song. Uh, and we end up with 16 parts. But what's nice is that's supported as we'll just watch as we'll move. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wobble! And you can see there, as the children are counting, they are seeing each of the numerals. So it just reinforces that. They're looking at a numeral as they say each of the numbers and as they do an action. So as they're saying the numbers um, 5, 6, 7, 8, they're going to see 5, 6, 7, 8. And they're going to pat their heads for the 5, 6, 7, 8 time. Now, as that song moves on, what you can do is also use the backing track. As we've mentioned before on many of the other uh, songs, there's the original track which you can play, there's an animation which I've just played you then, and there's also a backing track. If you put the backing track on, you can put anything into there uh, to count other than just the ones that you see on the song itself. So I'm just gonna give an example there using the eight verse. Let's imagine children are working with a partner uh, and then you could count eight wheels on the cars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, using two cars and counting four wheels on each. Similarly, eight legs on the sheep. Same idea, two sheep, toy sheep, obviously, uh, and count the legs on those. Uh, eight limbs on the child, but I think that should be children. Eight limbs on the children. And so the children hold up their arms. And they, again, if they're, sitting, if, they're, if they're sitting down, this works really well because they hold up one arm for one, the second arm for two, one leg for three, the other leg for four, and then their partner uh, does the same thing. And then finishing up with eight stamps on the floor. Um, alternatively, you could count sounds, eight bangs on the drum. You could have dice, eight spots on the dice, and that could be uh, four dice with two spots on each, or it could be uh, two dice with four spots on each. I like this one, eight blocks in the box. This is where the children are doing something. They're going one, two, three, 
four. And as they're doing that, they're dropping the blocks into the box. And finally, eight sides on the squares. And again, that's the idea of four multiplied by two or four and add four. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these, I'm choosing things deliberately that go in fours. So they're practicing seeing things in fours as well uh, as an overall uh, amount of eight or 12 or however it progresses. Last but not least, if you want to build in something like Wobbling Soldiers with other resources or other activities, this is going to link into what we're going to be doing for the rest of this session and for the rest of this week. You can see there a picture of an abacus, a picture of a Numicon number frame piece, an egg box and a number track. What we could be saying here, let's look at the ones further down here, the eights, um, eight beads on the frame and then actually pull them across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So counting those beads and dragging them across on the abacus. It could be eight holes on the piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're getting used to a different image of eight. Um, eight cubes in the box. Now, because this is a slower count, there'll be time to drop them in. So that will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that again gives you a really nice image of eight that we're going to be focusing on a lot this week. And last but not least, eight counters on the track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. Get out there. Now, what you can see from those four images on there, that they are all very, very different images of eight. The most conventional one in the UK is this one here, the number track, uh, where, the, where the children are just counting things in a straight line. What's nice is you can see each of the numerals underneath, which you don't see on a, uh, obviously on a normal number track, you would cover the numerals up, but this way they're underneath, which works really, really well. Here you're seeing a kind of double four, which is your standard Numicon image. And on these two images, you're seeing five and three, but in different ways. On the abacus, it's a straight line of five and three. And with the egg box or the tens frame, it's five on the top, three on the bottom. And even better, you see that it's two less than 10. We're going to use lots of these resources this week. and have a little play with number frames and egg boxes and number tracks and, uh, and so on. And you'll be able to see how numbers can be represented in lots and lots of different ways. Just generally, uh, to explore the aim of the week, we're going to look at the principles of mastery how these can be applied to early years. What is a mastery curriculum? How does a mastery curriculum enable all children to succeed? What does early mastery of number look like? How can we develop number sense and real high levels of conceptual understanding at EYFS and early key stage one? As we mentioned, that's gonna be done through a sense of 10. In particular, the use of tens frames as a basis for place value and the calculation. We're also going to have lots of visual imagery uh, throughout the sessions so we can use practical apparatus and real life objects and things that mean something to children in EYFS. That brings me to a really simple question to kick off with. What is mastery? Well, in a nutshell, mastery is very simply depth of understanding. If you, you can master something at, I suppose, you, can't ma you can see something at a superficial level and you can master something at a deeper level. And the deeper we get into it, the more we're actually displaying that mastery. Mastery is achieved in many, many, many different ways, but probably the, the three or four most important are, first of all, concrete pictorial before abstract. Moving away from possibly the way that many of us were taught where numbers were written on a board, we made calculations out of them, but we never really understood what we were doing. In a mastery curriculum, we start with the concrete materials first. We manipulate the materials, we really visualize things so we have an understanding before we start to write things down in the abstract way. That does kind of automatically fit in with the way that foundation stage often works, um, but that's the way that it's achieved uh, throughout the whole school. Secondly, everyone does everything. It's not a lower, middle, higher sort of um, differentiation. It's all children work on every activity. All children use the images. All children use the resources. Differentiation comes through how well the teacher questions them and how deep the children go into the mathematics and eventually how well they apply their understanding. That takes us into the areas, obviously, of reasoning and problem solving. Pretty much what foundation stage do all of the time. So pre-mastery in early years is actually probably very similar to the way that 
a high quality foundation stage um, curriculum is generally taught. We're going to see how that links into the mastery curriculum in key stage one. And we're going to be looking at loads of activities, resources, models, images, songs, games, uh, and many other things. What we're going to start off with is counting. I mean, there's nothing better to begin with in early years than developing that skill of counting. Now, we can count anything. We can count on our fingers. We can count conkers or buttons or leaves or shells or absolutely anything that we've got available in our early years setting or at home. Pasta pieces, you know, anything, anything pretty much, uh, you know, cars, uh, connecting camels, any toys, whatever we've got available, the first skill that we'd like to build up with children in the early years is that ability, number one, to be able to count, and number two, to be able to recognise small numbers without counting. And that's the first thing we're going to look at today. So when we look down at the desk, what we'll now see is lots of teddies. Now, uh, they're all parts of, actually, these teddies and lots of the resources I'm using now actually come from TTS. TTS have produced... Um, a kind of pre pre bar modeling kit really which looks at visual images uh, in early years in key stage one uh, and the dice and the teddies and a few of the other gems are all part of that kit what we're going to do now is use the teddies uh, just for a little uh, brief activity so we're going to put the camera on the teddies <clears throat> you're going to look at the teddies there and all i want you to do is just work out how many there are really quickly so one two three move the camera away How many teddies were there? How did you work it out? Did you just see the amount? Did you see a little section of teddies? Did you, did you colour code it? Because obviously there were ones with red bows and ones with blue bows. Did you one to one count them? How did you work out how many teddies there were there? What do you think children do? Well, they could just have a guess. 10, 12, 20, three, or more than likely they will actually count them. So let's go back to the teddies again. How will they count them? Will they do the following? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's fourteen teddies. That's what a lot of children will do. They've got the one to one counting, but what have they done? Just go and pause the video there. Are there fourteen? I mean, there's not. How did I get the answer fourteen? So I hope you realise that there aren't 14 teddies there, but why did I say there were? Well, we'll just watch it again. I'll recount. I often do this with children. I'll count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, fifteen. I've got fifteen this time. I'll try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, every single time I'm counting, I'm making my counting accurate with my actual finger touching. I'm not over counting them, I'm pointing and touching, but I'm getting a different answer every time. What have I actually done? Well, I'm, I'm sure you've realised I've double counted uh, several of the teddies. That's what a lot of children do when they first see uh, any amount of anything, whether it's teddies, whether it's pirates, whether it's flowers, whether it's uh, ladybirds, whether it's sweets, they count and they double count. They, they, they count it once, they see it again and they count it again. That's because obviously the teddies are laid in what I'm going to refer to as random style. Now for the rest of the week you're going to hear lots of different um, types of style that I'm going to refer to. My first one is random style. When teddies are just set out or counters or sweets or cakes are set out completely randomly so they're a lot harder to count. We don't want random style, we want something that's a bit more structured. So what we're going to do now is take those teddies and make it much, much easier for me to see how many teddies there are. So let's make it a little bit easier. Let's move from this random kind of mess to something that's a bit more structured. We'll put the teddies in order. We could count as we're doing it, but I will just put them in order first. This will upset some people at the moment, and I'm sure you'll see why in a second. Let's see, let's put all those. Now put those teddies in a straight line. Let's just count them. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Brilliant. Let's just double check. I'll start at this end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now that particular strategy has been going on for hundreds of years probably. What do we do to make sure we're more accurate once we can count one-to-one -one correspondence correctly and once we actually know our number names, we just put them in a straight line. Once they're in a straight line, we know we can get the answer a lot more accurately. The answer is 
there are nine teddies. What we're going to do now is just have a look at how you might rearrange them, because a lot of people will look at that and say, well, I want to put all the red teddies together. And actually, that does make more sense long term, if I was to separate them and put the reds and the blues together like that. What we can actually do now is we've got a better mathematical activity. We've still got nine teddies, but what we've got are one, two, three, four, five, six red teddies. And obviously seven, eight, nine, but we can also see six red teddies and three blue teddies. Now, what's also nice about this resource is that TTS have provided actual cards that go alongside uh, the teddies as well. So if you want to actually, you know, use a display later on to talk about what you've been doing, and obviously you can't put teddies on the wall, you could actually use the cards. The great thing about the cards is they can be rearranged in the same way the teddies are. They can be moved around. We can, we can still see two, four, six uh, red teddies, or one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and three blue. We can also... Again, we'll talk about this a lot later on about you know, different ways of arranging things. But I could put the teddies like this, and I could put the blue teddies like that. Now, what I might want to say to the children now, or as, as, a, as a following activity or on a different day, can you arrange the teddies like that? So they've seen an image, a different image, and suddenly they can rearrange the teddies. It's a really nice activity because you're providing them with a little bit of structure. You might not even tell them to rearrange them like that. You might just leave the cards uh, in that arrangement and just see... Can the children do the rearrangement? Again, what I might want to do is I might want to rearrange the cards that way. And again, we can see the children can make the teddy representation match it. And they can talk about it. What can I see? Three on the top, three on the bottom. Over here, I can see kind of three teddies. They're in a kind of triangle. What I can also do, maybe, let's maybe mix and match the teddy images. Let's have a look what else we can do. Really, really nice activity. So I'm going to start off with one of those. Actually, I'll put myself like that. One there, two there, and I'm going to put three there, like that. And see if I can create uh, that sort of image. So what I now get is my one teddy there, my two teddies here, and my three red teddies, uh, like that. So again, there's loads and loads of options just using the cards. Uh, we'll come back to those cards later on. I'm going to show you uh, quite a lot of activities uh, using the cards and developing their use as well. Sticking with our stylish mathematics, we've moved away from random style, what we've moved to now is Teddy's in a straight line. It's got a very, very cunning name, Lion Style. So again, I always say to the children, what's the style we started with? Random Style. What style have we put them in now? Lion Style. And we ask the children to shout that out. Random Style, when they're all in a mess, so we can't count them very well. And then Lion Style, so we can now count them much, much easier. And I'm gonna mix them up again now, so they are a bit more of a mess, so we've got the blues and the reds all over the place. That was a little bit more like our original uh, set of nine. Now, n again, line style's okay. The problem with line style is, and we talked about this a lot in the previous sessions, in order to know how many there are, you actually have to count them all the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to be able to see the answer without having to count them all the time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple of teddies away for the time being now, just to give yourself a little bit more space on the table. So I'll put these back on the shelf. So we've now got seven teddies, but to be honest, you can't really see seven, you just see a random arrangement of teddies, sorry, a line style arrangement of teddies on the table. Let's see what we're gonna do now. What I'm gonna do now is separate the teddies and put those two over there. Let's have a look how many we've got now. We've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we've separated them into five and two. And what I'll ask the children to do then, and we're going to look at this activity shortly, is use their fingers to show how many teddies there are in each group. So you look up this way with the camera, and we've got five and two, and we put them together, and we get seven. Or we started with seven, and we've moved them into five and two, or five and a bit. If it was six teddies, we'd have five and one. If it was eight teddies, we'd have five and three. So we're getting our brains now and helping the children to see that actually it's even better if we arrange the teddies into a five and a bit uh, arrangement. Obviously, always start in a line to get used to one-to-one -one correspondence, but as soon as that's done, let's get into the idea of five and a bit, and let's work on that for the rest of the year. It doesn't always need to be in a straight line. I can also put the teddies into that sort of arrangement. But again, we'll come back to that one shortly. So we'll leave them like this for the time being. I've now got eight teddies. I've got five here and three here. Five and three is eight. Five and a bit. How many teddies? Eight. What's the name of this style? This style is 
five style. So we've got a nice long line of teddies. One, two, three, four, five. Separate them now when we can see five and three. If we continue to do that long term with every resource we use, what we'll end up with is children who'll be able to look at an amount and see it straight away. They won't need to count because that's how they arrange things. They arrange it into five and a bit. And just encourage that over and over again until it becomes second nature. Let's set things out five style. So I'm going to pause now and introduce a different resource. What I've put on the table now are the TTS gems. These are brilliant. A lot of schools have got gems. They don't, obviously you don't need to buy them from TTS. Wherever you get them from, they, they work really, really well. Children tend to like these because they are quite bright, shiny, um, and you know, really nice colours. How many gems have we got? Again, at the moment it's random style, so we need to make it much easier. Put them in a straight line. Then we count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then after the five, we separate them. Now, we should be able to see five style. I've got five and four. Five and four gives me a total of nine. I can always check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But eventually that becomes my image of nine. That five style, five and a bit. Again, as soon as I arrange them that way, it becomes even easier to see. We're going to look at that image uh, very, very shortly. Again, if I just roll some dice. I'm not looking at the dice numbers, I'm just going to throw the dice on the table. How many dice have I got? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. In a straight line, one, two, three, four, five, six. Line style, but five style, five and one uh, is six. Now, as we develop this activity further up, further, again, we can create the tense frame image, which again, is still five style, but done in a slightly different way. Or we can just play around with that six. And later in the week, we're gonna spend a lot more time looking at how we can then rearrange our uh, resources into different images, into the twos, uh, into the threes, into a four and a two, uh, and so on. That's all gonna come later as we develop these activities into, let's look at a number and let's see how many ways we can see it. But initially, we're gonna get that idea of random six becomes six in a straight line. We go from random style to line style, and we then go to five style, which is five and a bit. And just practice that with whatever resource we've got. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw a final resource on the table, and I'm gonna ask you to pause the video then. I have no idea how many I'm gonna put on the table now. I don't know how many there are, I'm just gonna throw them on and just see um, how many we end up with. I'm going to put them completely random. I'd like you at home now to get any resource that you can find at home that will work, uh, whether it is pasta or coins or whatever you happen to have uh, close to hand. Get a handful, throw them on the floor in front of you, have a look at them and then arrange them. First of all, line style and then secondly, five style. Have a look at these ones. We'll do this shortly. Off you go. Okay, so whether you've got shoes or pasta or coats or jumpers or, you know, anything that you happen to have in your house that you've been counting at the moment, uh, you've arranged them like this. This is obviously um, cakes or um, cupcakes. What are we going to do with those? Well, they're random at the moment. We're going to put them in a straight line. Again, I've not organised them colour-coded yet. I know a lot of children would and a lot of adults would. They, they would deliberately organise them like that. That's where I would go later because it, it, you know, it does really help later on to see how many we've got. At the moment, they're all random, so I'm gonna mess them up a little bit. We've got a random arrangement of cakes. How many have we got? Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brilliant. Let's arrange them five style. One, two, three, four, five. That's my five. And actually, I've ended up with another five. If we look this way, let's have a look at my fingers. Five. And five gives me a total of 10. So I've actually created exactly like my hands. I had 10 like that and I've created uh, two fives. If I now eat three of my cakes, yum yum, one, two, three, I can now see that there are seven cakes. But there are seven cakes and I don't need to count them. I can see five, six, seven. So it takes away that need long term to have to count because I get used to seeing five and a bit. Obviously the children do need, first of all, to be really secure in one two, three, four, and five. And later in the week, again, we're gonna look at a sense of four. What does a sense of four look like? How many ways can I see four? So I get a real picture of what four is, and five and three. And then we take it up to this activity, where now I've got a really good image of seven. My image of seven is five and two, or five and a bit. As we mentioned before, 
What's mastery all about? It's about concrete first, pictorial second, and abstract less. We'll see that very, very shortly with lots of activities where we're going to be looking at the concrete and a little bit of the pictorial, but we're not going to be looking very much today, just a little bit, but not very much uh, at the abstract. And that's a very simple two plus two equals four as a concrete, pictorial, and abstract. Another important element of mastery in the teaching for mastery is that teachers do expect every child to succeed. We often say the children have learned something today. They can learn something in an hour. Everybody can learn something in an hour. But mastering something is not about learning something in an hour. Mastering something is about having it in your head and kind of having it understood forever. It's really understood. It's not just something I've learned in a lesson the following week. I've forgotten it because it was last week. It's something that's been practiced so much that it becomes second nature. Like we say, it's just like learning to ride a bike. Once you've mastered riding a bike forever, then that's going to be with you no matter how long uh, you know it goes between riding a bike uh, and not riding a bike. You get back on it 20 years later and it's still there because you mastered it. And that's what learning uh, mathematics should be about. If we just teach something once or twice, it's not going to be retained and it's not going to be mastered. And final little quote of the day, some children do find maths easier than others, but most pupil underachievement is not because the pupils aren't genetically capable of doing it, it's because there are deficiencies in teaching and learning. Basically, the maths hasn't been set up to the learning style of the children in question. So we need to make sure we've got as many visuals, as many images and as many models as possible to give the children the best chance of learning. Well, I hope you enjoyed the initial look uh, through stylish maths. Uh, you can see on here, there's actually more styles that we haven't even discussed yet. Uh, we've looked at random style, which is a brilliant way to start. Uh, we've developed the random into a straight line, and that's the nursery approach to begin with, to get the children to go from random to straight line. We develop a small number sense. Once the children really understand up to five, and then they start to be able to one-to-one -one count to ten, let's then move into five style, like on the abacus, where you see five and a bit, but going still in a straight line. That develops into the fourth one we looked at today, which was 10 frame style, which is the egg box image, uh, which is still five and a bit, but again, where it shows uh, a clearer picture. Uh, we can move then on to number frame style, which is like the Numicon image, where you will be seeing the number um, as a double, for example, double three, rather than five and one. The last three, which we've not really looked at, but we're going to explore different images later uh, in these sessions, are two style, where you can set out the number six, for example, as two, two and two. Uh, dice style, where, which again, for a number six, would look very much like the Numicon piece. For, for a number five, it would look exactly like a five uh, dice. And finally, pattern style or freestyle, uh, where the children just set their own up. They create their own image uh, of whatever number uh, that we're looking at. Just some examples. Here's number seven, as we looked at earlier. Seven randomly set out. Seven set out just in a straight line. Seven set out now as a five and a two in five style. The even better, 10 frame style, where I can also see the three less than 10, but still five and two. And actually I can see a four and a three as well if I need to. And the number frame or Numicon image, where you can see basically six add one or that the odd number uh, build up because that's how the Numicon uh, image works. Again, Numicon or tens frames, can be turned uh, the other way around uh, as well. Looking at the number 12, which we haven't actually done so far, let's just look at how this would develop if we take it a little bit further beyond 10. Random style is a complete mess. You can really not see the number whatsoever. You can see sets of numbers. You can see a four, you can see another four, maybe um, a two and a two, or you can see maybe a five there and a three here, but it's very difficult uh, to see uh, that number. In a straight line, as we mentioned, you can definitely see and count easier, one, two, three, four, but you're not going to recognise the number and you'll have to count them all individually. Instantly look at the difference this makes. For children in late in foundation stage, early in year one, let's look at that 12 straight away. Five, and five is 10, start a new line, that gets us to 12. That's how the abacus, the Slavonic abacus uh, works, where you've got five there, five there, and a new two underneath. The tens frame, shows the same idea of double five plus two, but unlike the five style abacus where you get to five, leave a space and start a new five, here you get to five and start the new five underneath. So you get six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then a new box, so to speak, to make 12. Um, 
number frame style uh, or Numicon style. You can see there how that can be developed that way, but with both the Numicon piece and with the tens frame, you may well wish to turn them uh, the other way. So they're actually building up with the, with the Numicon one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. With the tens frame, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to ten, and then start a new one, two. With Numicon, it's horizontal, one, two, three, four, five, six, and at ten, you start a new two. So they look similar, but they're not exactly the same. These are all, certainly these last three are fantastic images. If we keep working on them with children in early years for smaller numbers, it will just become something that's second nature. A little activity that I used to do in class was to give children anything to count, whether it was counters, whether it was um, cakes or sweets or conkers or buttons or whatever we were counting, shells. Uh, and what the children had to do is to work with a partner and I'd just play something like Gangnam Style in the background or some karaoke version or some boppy dance music. And at certain points I'd say change to Abacus Style, Eggbox Style, Numicon Style in the old days. This would now be five style, 10 frame style, number frame style. In between each style, we mess the counters up and start all over again. It just gives the children that opportunity to play around with the different styles. There is a fantastic number fun song that goes into this uh, sort of idea. It's called Arrangement Styles. This means the children can watch it on screen before they start doing it themselves. You could use this song as a teaching tool, or you could pause the animation at any time and ask the children to replicate what's on the screen. So entirely up to you how you do it. You can use it as a teaching tutorial, let the children just watch it, or they can uh, replicate the activity. This is the basic version, uh, which just shows the first few arrangements. You need seven counters. It's time for arrangement styles. Let's go line style. Random style. You need two more counters. That makes and so on. You can see how that develops really nice little activity. Again, it doesn't need to be counters on, on the screen. It is. It's just lovely to do with absolutely any resource. Again, the instrumental version is so good because you can adapt it to any number that you want, uh, and you can have any resource you want uh, that would make it work. Um, it's just nice for something that you can use yourself that just shows you those styles. Uh, again, if I just come out of the PowerPoint, the animation, there is the, um, the PowerPoint as well. There is also um, a teacher ideas pack, uh, but more importantly, there's an alternate version uh, as well uh, of arrangement styles. Um, that's the basic one, which is the um, arrangement styles basic three to five. If I just go back, there's also the enhanced version. Now the enhanced version, I'm not gonna play the whole song. Let's open this one up, but the enhanced version allows you to go a little bit further. Um, so if I just click on the start there. You need seven count. Now, as before, it cuts through the images that we've seen before. Freestyle. Oh, oh, oh. Number frame style. Twos style. So as before, it's very, very similar, but it adds the element of the two style one, uh, which is really helpful, uh, and the freestyle, uh, which allows the children uh, to create their own pattern as well. 
So what we've got now are some sweets from a sweet counter, funnily enough, uh, randomly distributed on the table. What I can do is go from random, first of all, to line style, and then to five style. What we do actually want though, very quickly, once children are used to doing this, what we then do is we dispense with line style completely. The children will then move. Right, we've got a random style. How many sweets? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven sweets, five uh, and two. What we're now gonna do is see the final image of the day. As I say, later in the week, we're gonna develop this into further images. But the final main image of the day is this one. Uh, and this one is referred to as 10 frame style. Because what we've now done is created the kind of the Singapore maths mastery style uh, tens frame. Well, what I'm looking at now are five sweets on the top and now two sweets on the bottom. We're going to do loads of work on ten frames this week, but why is this such an important image? It's such an important image because I can also see the number bond to ten. When I see the five and the two in the normal five style, I see five in a straight line, another two. Obviously, I can count on to ten, but I don't immediately see the bond to ten. As soon as I arrange my sweets like that, what I'm now looking at is I can see the seven and I can also see the three spaces. If I was to add three more sweets, which I'll get from over here, I'm actually going to colour code the whole thing now, which will probably please a lot of people, because actually this is going to look better. I can see five sweets that have got a yellow background at the top. I can see two on the bottom. And if I now add another three sweets, one, two, three, that gets me uh, to a total of ten. Um, so... I can see them straight away, which you can't really see as clearly from the normal five style. Now, what I've also brought is one of the um, tense frames that have been created by a company called Propeller, Propeller.education. They've created a downloadable resource, it's only about a couple of quid, uh, that, have, that enables you to see uh, lots of different tense frames and arrange uh, lots of characters into those tens frames. This is the school bus, it's really good. I mean, there's a lot of additional children that we haven't even put on the bus yet. Uh, you can see all these different children that could uh, be brought into play. So you can have some fantastic early years work just talking about the children. Uh, again, we can actually you know, ask, the, ask them about the different characteristics of the children. Uh, you know, about, about the, you know, the, uh, the, the colour of the t-shirts, the colour of the hair, whether they're smiling or not. Uh, you, know, you, can have, you can just talk about all the different clothing that they're wearing uh, and so on. But the children have actually got on the bus this time. How many children are on the bus? Eight. How do I know? Because they've been set out tens frame style. Five on the top uh, and three on the bottom. Now what's lovely about this is the children can just create their own and when we talk about tens frames later in the week we'll do all sorts of activities uh, where we move them around where you can have different amounts of children on the top uh, and the bottom. What we can see now obviously are five children on the bottom and three children on the top. We can see ten frame style now set out in a completely different way. It's still ten frame style, we've still seen a five and a three uh, we're just seeing it done uh, slightly differently. You can also see the option for the double four image with four children on the top and four on the bottom. So we're going to explore a lot of that when we do the 10 frame work uh, later in the week. But for the time being, let's look at uh, 10 frame style, the five and the three. So let's quickly conclude uh, this part of the training by looking at those sheep and arranging the sheep now into the different styles. In, at the moment, the sheep are random style. What we're going to do is, first of all, put the sheep into line style. We can then check how many there are. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can now turn it into five style. Where we don't need to count them now. We can see a five and a two. And we then put those two underneath there. And what we've now created is ten frame style. Still the five and the two but we can also see three less than 10. If I want to, I could put three more sheep on to conclude that and show the actual total of 10. But for the time being, we can see uh, those seven. If you can practice that with whatever resource you've got in school and just do it again and again and again, and also get the children to name the styles, uh, random style, line style, so random style, line style, five style, and then 10 frame style. Uh, you know, let's do that one more time. Random style, line style, five style, and then ten frame style. Uh, and just get them to name those over and over again until they just become common terms that the children are using. Whenever they see five style, it's six, which is five and one. Eight, which is five and three. And it's exactly the same with the tens frame. The tens frame shows me 
5 and 2, but 3 less than 10. It shows me 5 and 1 and 4 less than 10. So you can see that by looking at the actual pictures on the images as well. Thank you so much for joining us for day one of the EYFS training. Please come back tomorrow when we're going to be looking very specifically at the tens frame. Loads of different ways to use a tens frame and loads of different types of tens frame as well. I do look forward to seeing you then. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, see you tomorrow.